What are barnacles? What are these tiny, alive, little rocks? How do they even survive? How do they feed? And more importantly, why are they the best, craziest organisms on the entire planet? And stick around to the end when I'll even tell you why barnacles have a world record-breaking love life. All that and more on today's episode of Marine Mumbles. Wow, I'm really starting to sound like an American show host. Mm. So if you don't follow me on social medias, oh, that was my ankle. <laughs> or haven't watched my Q and A video all about me, marine biology, and uh, rock pulling and stuff. Um, you might not know that barnacles are my favourite creatures. Don't worry, I play it subtle, so I'm not surprised. Barnacles. 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 <laughs> barnacles. <laughs> and for when it gets cold. One second. <laughs> so today I want to tell you why I have invested a significant amount in barnacle attire and why I think these guys are really, really awesome. So let's start off with what even is a barnacle? Would you believe me if I said that a barnacle was a family and very good friends? with these guys. With these guys. And these guys. But I'm not lying because barnacles are a type of crustacean, which means they are in the same family as crabs, lobsters and shrimp. Now when we look at a barnacle compared to a crab, you don't really think that you can see many similarities but it is true. And the body form of a, uh, a barnacle fits in with the same body form of a crustacean, which is why it's placed in that family. And barnacles have lots and lots of legs, just like these guys. Legs? What are you even talking about? Barnacles can't move. How can they have legs? Yes, random voice from above. You are right, adult barnacles don't move. In fact, adult barnacles don't move so unbelievably well that scientists and engineers and chemists around the world study them because they produce a glue that is one of the strongest glues on the entire planet. And that is how well they don't move. That glue is very, very special and uh, something that scientists are still trying to replicate to be able to use in you know, our everyday human lives but they use their legs for something else which they can do because voice for above they don't have to move and they use their legs for feeding now to get your head around why they would use their legs for feeding and why a barnacle doesn't look anything like a crab i want to walk you through their life cycle and you can kind of start to understand why these guys are a little bit different but before we leave the, the topic of glue, why don't you guys stick around and subscribe too so that you don't miss out on awesome videos every single Wednesday where I go rock pulling, talk about creatures, paint the creatures and celebrate the wonderful world of our oceans. Stick with me. <gasps> God, this is what I've become trying to get people to subscribe. So adult barnacles don't move, but you always find them next to each other. Really crowded, bunched up, next to each other. And that's because uh, they need to be next to each other to mate. Now I'm gonna explain mating in barnacles at the end of the video because that's the, that's the world leading fact and I wanna save that for the, uh, the big finish. Moving on. Ah. Once a barnacle is mated, they are ready to release 
um, larvae into the water column. And this is the part of their life cycle where they move. Because if barnacles weren't able to move, then they wouldn't really ever get anywhere. And you can find barnacles on rocky shores, on any structure we put in the ocean, bottom of boats, harbours, they're really found throughout the world. In fact, there is 1,400 species of barnacle found globally. So these guys are not just this little unsuccessful group of species, they really are world dominators. And to do so, they have to move. So these larvae go into the water column and this is where it gets kind of freaky and kind of a bit like an alien sci-fi film. They go through six stages of this thing called a nauplius or a nauplia larvae. And this is a little tiny microscopic larvae that will feed. So it goes through the water column as plankton, going where the current takes it, trying to feed on all of the tinier plankton and microscopic organisms as it goes. And it kind of gets a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And depending on the species, the length of time that each little nauplius exists, increases until we get to uh, the next stage where the last nauplius will molt and become what is called a cypriot. Now this is in a really important stage because a cypriot is different from a nauplius larvae because it can't uh, feed so it has to just use the energy reserves that those six stages before have saved up for it. And it will then look for a place to find a new home. Now these next few facts coming up, in fact one fact in particular, is what I have shaped my entire career on. This is, this sentence is the reason I spend what I do nine to five and all my effort goes into it because I was so unbelievably intrigued by this one fact and it's one of the reasons I love barnacles so much. Now this Cypriot has two little antennae that uh, is actually able to feel the material that it settles on. And barnacles can tell if it likes material or doesn't. And if it doesn't like a material, it will kind of hop up, jump along and find somewhere else to settle, which I think is incredible that this tiny little organism knows enough and has enough uh, information in its Self, I suppose, to decide what is a good or a bad place to settle and a good or a bad material to try and give itself a bit of a, a push and a bit of an edge to it. Now I could talk about this for a whole nother video at the very least and even down to the fact that these guys leave footprints and it's a really cool process. So if you guys want to hear more about barnacle footprints and about uh, why they're so fussy, where they settle, then comment below what is the shoe size of a barnacle and I will make another video because I just think that's a really cool comment at the bottom of my video. <laughs> so head down there and do that. Um, so once the barnacle has settled, it metamorphosizes like a caterpillar into a butterfly into a barnacle, which in interpretive dance standards, I imagine it looks something like this. The barnacle uses its antenna and if it likes where it is, flips over and basically sits on its bum. It then metamorphosizes on its back, sticks its legs in the air and has a good old feed. Can someone say, barnacle yoga? Probably not, I realise this is ridiculous. Oh well. <laughs> okay, enough of that. I've... Enough. <laughs> so let me end on the world record breaking fact about barnacles. So lots of other organisms um, that live in rock pools and everything that don't live close together have to spawn into the water column. That means both reproductive uh, cells go into the water column and they mix in the water column and they will form a larvae and, and go off. But barnacles play it differently to ensure that the reproductive uh, cells and parts go where they need to go. They um, are hermaphrodites, so they are both male and female, and they will use a world record breaking penis to transfer um, and fertilise its surrounding bodies. No need for dating apps for them. 
they just, you know, go with the closest option. And because, I mean, that's quite a feat to go outside of your own body when you can't move and fertilise the guys next to you, barnacles have the longest penis to body length ratio of any organism on the entire planet. So inside that shell, that, that barnacle then grows around itself as it's metamorphosizing, metamorpho, meta, while it's changing shape, will be the cirri, which are the feeding legs that bring in those particles that are floating by in the water, the stomach, which it then, you know, enjoys and eats, and pretty much the rest of the shell is a space for that special glue to be put down. And uh, that really, 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 really giant penis. That's pretty much what a barnacle is. I could talk about barnacles for a lot longer. So if that's something that you guys wanna hear, if you like these sketchbook sessions, make sure to like so that I know I will definitely add this to my list to make more of. Uh, make sure to subscribe, you don't want to miss out on any videos and I'm a small channel and every single subscriber helps convince the powers that be to keep sharing uh, this video online and um, helps more people learn the very interesting and world record breaking facts of barnacles and you wouldn't want anyone to miss out on that would you? So subscribe. I'll be back next Wednesday with another video here at Marine Mumbles telling you something awesome about the awesome world of sea life and I hope you all have a wonderful week until then. Bye everyone, see you next time.